Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where I think we'll be going and talking to people now uh, and then we'll go back <laughs> to the collector stuff but I'll do like a really quick fast forward so we're not like totally lost because I realize yeah I'm like I started a big main mission and then I'm like oh just kidding I'm going back but I'm sorry I have to do it I just heard the collectors hit the Ferris Fields colony everyone's gone shit we are going to make those dirty buggers pay. Uh, this is one of those things where if you go and you find out stuff like this, you'll remember the Ferris Fields is where the guy upstairs who's talking in the dormitory with his friend, uh, his family is there. So now they're gone. Shepard. Just checking in, making sure you're acclimatizing. The hold is too open, not enough cover. Armor is limited. Warlord Granth would target here to scatter heavy cargo, then focus on engines. That's what tank imprints show about human ships, anyway. It's how I learned from the tank. Old pictures where memory is. Like holding a book for a child. Just remember this picture after picture. No help with finding a reason to care. Yeah, that, that was something that I think Okir didn't expect. Uh is that like he thought these pictures would like evoke something but like that comes with like experience and like personal memory you know like doesn't you can't just like throw that on to somebody what other human infos floating around in there less than a finger deep to sever your spine you're soft salarian sasari all soft quarians not so much turians you have to work the blade i guess <laughs> don't see much point to it though <laughs> much point. <laughs> uh, <never laughs> point. Yeah, man. Something must move you. You're as genetically Krogan as you can get. I see suffering, the dead, and I think weak. I'm supposed to be strong. My guts were grown from thousands more worthy. The dead were weak. If they were strong, I wouldn't be needed. I don't know why Okir started teaching. When he turned on the tank the first time, I screamed. Weak. Pitiful. Hmm. So you started small, but you became what you are. Not everyone gets that chance. I'm built for strength, but didn't earn it. I just am. Those dead were strong enough to try, even if they lost. The perfect Krogan, ignoring what made me. No strength in that. I'll take another look at what happened to the Krogan. Find a reason to care about it. It's it's really interesting. Like he's like going through this like philosophical conundrum this whole time. Like I don't know, like he's intelligent, obviously, and like knows like probably maybe more history than your average Krogan does, but like, yeah, I think the idea Okir was trying to go for was that like he would create this like worthy, perfect Krogan and it wouldn't be weak and coddled you know, like the others, like, who were born naturally, but, like, uh, Grunt hasn't earned anything yet, necess necess necessarily, right? Like, like he said, like, he's, he's been born from, like, the dead that were strong, or, like, you know, that, you know, like, a, a, an amalgamation of, like, the brothers and sisters, or probably just brothers, I guess, who died, and also, like, the, you know, DNA examples from, like, warlords, probably, but, like, he hasn't, like, he hasn't, like I was saying earlier, like, with some of the Krogan, like, the modern Krogan, too, like, they just haven't earned it yet. Like, uh, they haven't had to go through that survival, you know? Back for more. Always. Jack, Subject Zero, mm. whatever you call her, hell of a girl. Could have used a destructive little bitch like that ten years ago when we dropped blind into the Krogan DLC. <laughs> Took out a lot of Krogan that day, but we lost way too many men. Doesn't matter who you are. You got a gun in your face, chances are good you'll do what the other man says. Only two types don't buckle at that point. Train killers and psychopaths. A lot of people can't tell the difference. I should let you go. He's... Oh, I wish you could get to know his Aida a little more. I mean, I know he's always, like, doing these little tiny story bits, but anyway, I could definitely see his Aida biting off more than he could chew with Jack. I think he knows, though. He's like, I think he admires her from a distance. 
Okay, let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's, let's let's navigate this minefield. Hey, tell me about you, Jack. I'm still finding out about me. Thanks for letting me look at these files. What's in them? Your friends at Cerberus are into some nasty things. I'm gonna find something I can use. I just know it. What if the answers aren't what you expect? I'm not looking for answers. I'm looking for names, dates, places. What happens when you find what you're looking for? I go hunting. Anyone who's screwed with me pays. Their associates pay. Their friends pay. The galaxy's gonna be a lot emptier when I'm done. I won't let you go on a killing spree. I'm here for your mission. After that, what I do is my business. What's your history with Cerberus? They raised me in a research facility. I escaped when I was a kid. Been on the run ever since. And they've been chasing me ever since. But soon, I'm gonna chase them. She's got a gun! You think about this a lot, don't you? I go to sleep with this. I wake up with it. Everyone I kill, I pretend it's the ones that did this to me. You don't have to live in this pit, you know. It's dark, quiet, and hard to find. That spells safety to me. You know, this ship is a powerhouse. You could go pirate. Live like a queen. I could help. Mm. I'm kind of curious what she says. You'd be my first mate. I'd lead the boarding party and handle the executions. What is it about killing that fascinates you so much? I figure every time someone dies and it's not me, my chances of survival go. This line stuck. Simple. That line has stuck with me for a long time. Like, like, what kind of like uh, environment do you have to grow up in where that that's what you've learned? Like, that's like the baseline of Jack right there. Is like everybody that she kills is like one more person she's outlived. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's rough. It's dark. <laughs> I should go. Bye. Yep. Renegade Frick. I need to be careful. I should be okay, honestly, overall. But the way that Paragon and Renegade works in this game, the way that their decisions work, isn't necessarily like, oh, you have this many points. You can take this Renegade action or this Paragon action. It works more on a percentage. You have to have, like, a... What is it like a seventy-five percent? There's like a, there's a couple really difficult decisions, like or like really difficult like Paragon versus Renegade step in the line, where like you can have access to neither the Paragon or the Renegade, even though you've like nearly maxed out Paragon or Renegade, you know, either one. But it's because like it operates on like a percentage kind of scale, where like you have to have like a seventy-five percent ratio or something of Paragon to Renegade to like make some of those like really like high level decisions um like high high octane not high octane like high stakes uh decisions um otherwise if you if you're too wishy-washy if you're like doing paragon and renegade um and you're kind of a middling ground uh then you lose access to those because you have like a 50 50 instead of like uh but it's not even like 50 50 points again it's like a percentage like a, it's a ratio not a percentage it's more like a ratio type thing and you have to maintain like a certain ratio of Paragon to Renegade in order to make those high level Paragon decisions, if that makes sense. Uh, so I need to be careful. Otherwise, because like, I don't mind doing a couple Renegade every now and then, especially when you're actually dealing with um, Krogan. Not necessarily Grunt, um, but Grunt is fun if you, do, if you choose a lot of the, uh, if you choose a lot of Renegade stuff, like he respects you a lot. Um, and later on we will encounter more Krogan and they will respect you more if you, um, if you do that renegade stuff. There you are. One of the girls in navigation thinks she might be pregnant. Even aboard a Cerberus vessel, life finds a way. <laughs> I have to say... That Jacob? Mm. You can you mm. can have him. He seems pretty intense. I wonder if he likes Japanese girls with a penchant for kleptomania. I think, honestly, they'd be a really fun couple. 
Joker and Edie are like an old married couple. I keep expecting to walk in on them bickering about the temperature in the cockpit. But she probably does so invisibly. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. I mean, I, I forgot you have to do Verizon before you can do oh, before you can acquire your husband. My one true love. Commander, what can you I do talk for about, you? Jack? Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another I time. I kind of. It's hilarious to me that like they purposely pit Jack and Miranda against each other. Jacob has introduced all my other companions, and uh, to be fair, all of them I think have been men. I think except Kasumi, but like Kasumi and Zaid don't get an introduction. Um, but Jacob has introduced all of them to the, the like to the command room. You know, we had those cutscenes, and then of course for Jack, Miranda comes in and of course tries to like set down the law on a woman who is obviously as lawless as they come. Like you know, uh, I will do a tiny bit of a spoiler. Depending on how you handle things, um, in Mass Effect Three, they can be friends, kind of like how um, Aveline and um, Isabella can be friends in Dragon Age Two, uh, where they're just two very different women, but somehow friendship finds a way <laughs> even if at the beginning they're very angry at each other but it's a little less wholesome with Miranda and Jack they are I'll let you work of course Commander. this game the freaking developers couldn't imagine having two women two powerful women get along Rupert, something different with tonight's meal seems like you put in more food and less ass yeah yeah keep talking like I don't know like, they are, to be fair, they are two very different women, but it always seems like you can't have two powerful women in the same room without a lot of, oftentimes, men thinking that they have to be catty to one another. And it's like, you could, you know, just respect each other, but to be fair, Miranda and Jack are <laughs> as opposite as you can get. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait what? for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. <laughs> Calibrate this! Talk to you later, Garrus. I'll be here if you need me. Okay. Ah, uh, so I believe that's everybody. I don't think anybody else has an opinion on... Jack yet. Jack Grant Saeed, Miranda Garrus Kasumi, Jacob Morden. Yes, okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, oh wait. The elusive man yeah, wishes yeah. to speak to you in the debrief. Jack's tattoos are beautiful, as colorful as her past. I'm sure. I have concerns with her temper, though. Yeah. You have worries about Jack? I know she'll be solid under fire, but her attitude suggests deep personal issues. She pushes people away, yet approaches sex casually. I don't think she understands her own motivations. Just be careful when talking about personal matters. Yeah. <laughs> Has she propositioned you? Because I think you should stay far away. If she thinks you can read her like a book, she'll tear you apart. I'll do my best not to piss her off. Please warn me if you fail. I want a chance to hide. Anyway, what's Nowhere up? Nowhere to hide on a ship like this. Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm good. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Um, okay, now we go talk. Yeah, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. We need to go talk to the elusive man. Okay, I'm so sorry for that, like, weird, random interrupt, jump, skip, hullabaloo. We'll go back to the Horizon Colony now. <laughs> la la la, everything's great, it's wonderful, it's a happy day, uh... Oh, life sucks. Yep. I can only skip through, like, half of these. These things are freaky! Alright, we're going in. I think I just wanted to switch to my... Uh, avalanche. these armor upgrades will protect us from the seeker swarms certainty impossible but in limited numbers should confused detection make us invisible to swarms in theory 
This ought to be fun. <laughs> Experimental technology. Only test is contact with seeker swarms. Have to test them in person. Should be exciting. He will talk to you on the radio um, if you haven't brought him with you, but it is extra fun to bring him with you. Also, he's not the kind of guy that would want to test it in person. Yeah, I see you. Uh, what a what ability that bug freaked me out. Um, okay, he's back on the assault rifle. He's on the SMG. I have the pistol. Let's see. Oh, as you can see, I also did manage to switch my armor. I will get that armor, or I will get that, um, that upgrade. That, not that upgrade, the, uh, the rifle. Or the heavy, it's a heavy weapon. This mission is hard to do with Morden, uh, because he has the lowest health pool out of everybody. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, you can. <gasps> what? He's supposed to have the lowest health out of everybody. Maybe he has the lowest rate of survival. There's a certain thing we'll see later where he has an incredibly low rate of... <laughs> Not an incredibly. Uh, a lower than average rate of survivability. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I want to do that one. Okay. Yeah. Killed that one. Gordon does look good there. Like we're all, oh dang it! I was gonna try to get a cool picture. Okay, okay, we're in. We're in, boys and girls. Hmm. Is that a, like a lawnmower? Oh my gosh, that whole thing's an explosive crate. I didn't use any uh, heavy ammo there. What a nice little weird randomly placed park. Like, usually you see this in a park, <laughs> but it's just like a, a little park bench. Not at a park, just in the open. Truly, the fact that we have seen that, like, usually it's like, oh, everything's untouched and everything looks undisturbed, blah, blah, blah. That's too many. I feel like that's too many swarms. Um. Commander, oh, no. Joker. Collector ship disrupting communications. Oh, good. We're on our own now. I feel like we should turn around. Lacking communication means, like, we should go back. But we also can't really go back. We are under a time limit, sort of. No! I'm gonna try to get him to stop. Try to get the, the one to stop, but I can't. The thing that's moving, rather. Heavy fire imminent. Oh, in we go. <gasps> oh, jeez, oh, jeez. <laughs> I was trying to be helpful and kind of get them from behind, but okay. Those things look like the husks that Geth used on Eden Crime. Yeah, no way. Husk technology came from Sovereign. Yes, the elusive man was right. The Collector's answer to the Reapers, damn it. 
We did collect her. That's oh, this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, we should be taking at least one collector back to study or something. Which kind of sounds horrific, honestly. They're a sentient species, but they're de but it's dead, you know? This thing looks human. The collectors must be using the colonists for raw materials. No, no husk creation spikes. Yeah. Collectors brought husks yeah, with yeah. them, taking colonists alive. Some other purpose. I was gonna say, the, the humans that they're taking now... Um... Or for a different purpose. These aren't the same creatures I fought on Eden Prime. They're more advanced. Evolved. They die just like anything else. Collectors must be experimenting on the colonists. What are they up to? Doesn't matter. We'll stop. <laughs> I like... Find out for sure when you stop them. <laughs> Zaid and Warden would be a fun combo, true, too, you know, for dialogue interactions. Uh, I like Saeed though, he's surprisingly upbeat about a lot of things. Not necessarily upbeat, but that's how I'm gonna translate it. The collectors aren't getting away with more victims. Let's move out. You heard the lady. Let's move. I like him so much. You heard the lady. Move out. I like that. Everyone's gone just like before. No signs of resistance. Must have happened quickly. Like, I don't know, just the fact that, like, Incoming. not the fact necessarily, but, like, it kind of feels like they don't, he doesn't really, he doesn't really care, like, man or woman. He's like, you heard her move, you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but it's like, whoa, oh, thanks! Like, <laughs> he's not questioning me because I'm a woman or anything. It's nice. <laughs> This ability, Angels, is what nice for the uh, relocation factor. Sometimes. Urban warfare, not my strong suit. Neutralize. Thank you guys for being able to aim. I cannot aim. Oh, there's some frozen colonists over there. Oh dang, you can use that as cover? Yo. Yo, that's dope. Also, there are people in here. Look at it. You can see them in there. Oh my gosh, they're twitching. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. That's horrifying. I would be cracking these open. I know we can't necessarily because we don't have the time, but like we need to we need to try to save everybody, right? Like we can't just like focus on a few of them. But I'll be dang, man. It's horrifying. I'm trying to crouch. No, not gonna happen. Okay. Sorry, concussive shot. Oh, the humans. Sit down. Yeah, I wanted to go. I wanted to go get a close up on those humans. Do you get a close up on them? Yeah, you do. Okay. Can I go out the window? Nope. Okay. Sometimes I think that. I keep kind of glimpsing my the arc reactor like blue loops, and I keep thinking it's something. I keep thinking it's something to click on. V. 
victim appears conscious, fully aware, trapped in stasis. Fascinating. They've been like this a long time. How do you know that? But also, like, that's horrifying. Like, they can see me, right? They're like, they're like, oh, help, help. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be screaming, like, please help. But we got here just in time. Well, sort of just in time. It would have been better if we got here sooner. Potentially. Maybe this is actually the ideal time. When they're like still loading people up, they're like distracted with that and they're like spread out, you know? And they aren't expecting any resistance. The collectors. Look at that. Also, I think that's like, that's not just like a weather anomaly like up there. That's like it landing and like like throwing up like a dust cloud, creating like a hole in the ground. And like, I don't know, you see people like trying to like help one another, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, we're trying to like run and there it is. I can use this baby, it's mine. I actually really do like this weapon. And I think it's the only time, see like he's hiding, he's trying to hide from everything. I think it's the only time you um, get to switch weapons mid, like the game switches weapons for you mid game, or like mid mission, because you don't usually get to switch mid mission. to help. Not difficult. Did not get in here. Oh. Gotta check, gotta check. Unlike Mass Effect Run 1, this game rewards you for looking around. Not up here, though. This is where I should have been for the high ground. <laughs> it's always somewhere. But that's for like an infiltrator. My pistol doesn't do as well from that far. I could stick Zaida there and put him on the pistol. Or the, sorry, the sniper rifle. <laughs> if I wanted to punish him, I could. I could freaking put him up there on a pistol. 
I think we get cleared out the enemies. Oh my gosh, I keep going over. Okay, before we go any further, and I keep going over the 30 minute mark, I'm gonna end this one here. So really quick, uh, thank you all for watching, and I wanna give an extra special shout out to my patrons, uh, especially to my sapling tier patron, Skellamonger, thank you so much, and my sapling tier patron, Reese Galito, thank you so much as well. I appreciate you both a ton. And I wanna give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, who is the super bestest, greatest, and thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, and I hope to see you on the next one.